way to financial opportunity is sometimes filled with risk. But somewhere, there are good, solid ways to go. And our ability to put you on strong, solid ground is simply unavailable at any other investment firm. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. A great deal of time and care go into the production of a fine play, just as they go into the making of a fine wine. Palmasson's Rhine Castle, the taste is smooth, flavorful, delicious. Paul Masson wines taste so good because they're made with such care. What Paul Masson said nearly a century ago is still true today. We will sell no wine before it's time. Tonight on CBS, great Sunday night lineup. Started with 60 minutes. On to Archie Bunker's place one day at a time. And the movie tonight is Oh God. I don't know if you saw that. No, I heard great that's movie. Real good movie. John Denver, George Burns. Here's Ray Strong on the kick return. 20, 25, fumble. 30. Fumble. Another fumble. <laughs> this one at the 38-yard line. And let's see. It looks like the Saints have recovered it again. That's Holmes with the ball, number 45. That would be their fourth fumble recovery here in the first half. And almost all have been turned into points. Boy, this is where you got to wrap up two arms on the ball. I heard George Allen say this so much, and he still does. He got one arm on the ball. Watch Holmes come in here and take this fumble. That's another big play. Last week, a block punt. This week, he recovers a fumble. There he is, 45 in the middle of the pile. Another first down. For the New Orleans Saints in Atlanta Territory, the Saint injured on the playoff, especially injured, is Ralph McGill. Number 49 is being helped from the field. It's difficult to play defense when you're on the field as long as Atlanta's defense has been out there. Officials have it marked at the 38-yard line of the Falcons. Archie Manning. If the Saints can hang out of the football a little better. Now the Falcons are doing. They're wrapping it up with two hands. They know that the Falcons are going to be trying to take it away. That time the Falcons with the blitz stopped the running attack of the Saints. Once he gets a couple down to the 36-yard line. New England leading Buffalo in the second period. And the strength of that field goal. Now we got the three-man rush going now for the Falcons. Second and eight. Muncie. Trying to reach the 35. Looks like he stopped his short. It'll be third down. And still seven needed for the first down. I recall that uh, first game this year between these two clubs produced a rather unique statistic. It was only the second time in the 60-year history of the league that both teams gained over 500 yards offense. Woo. Now I wonder, I doubt if Bartkowski will come in simply because of the rain. That's him under the hood there. He has a spring hip, which is bothering him. It's difficult for him to set up and throw. Third and seven, Archie Manning. Intended for Harris, and he's short and almost intercepted by Roland Lawrence at the 15-yard line. Good rush that time by the Falcons. Manning was really nailed there. Edgar Fields coming in from his right tackle spot put heat on him. Manning drops back. He had his receiver, but right there, it's difficult to get anything on the ball, and that's why that ball was short. He really took a shot. That's called a sternum hit. Billy Rickman anticipating the punt, standing on the 10. Rick Partridge is the Saints punter. He's turned out to be a real jewel. Draft choice of the Green Bay Packers, who has let go. And the Saints picked him up a month deep into the season. He's been outstanding. He sure has, and Frank, you got to give that Falcon defense credit. Behind 24 to nothing, they were still around that football. They stopped him. Partridge angling it for the near side coffin corner and drops it out of bounds very nicely. Oh, he just missed. He just missed that thing. Well, I think we've got another flag. Let's see. We may have a penalty marker on the play. Let's wait and see. Nope. They did. They picked it up. His hanky's probably getting wet. 
trying to dry it out. Been on the ground so long. Six minutes, 53 seconds left to play in the first half here. Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. It's a route so far. The Saints 24, the Falcons nothing. Ford 79 countdown clearance is underway. Your Ford dealer is receiving allowances and additional cash incentives that he can pass on to you now when you buy selected new 79 Ford cars and trucks. It could add up to $400 on V8 Mustangs and pickups, $600 on LTD, over $1,000 on Heritage Thunderbirds. See your Ford dealer now. Ask him about the $400, $600, and $1,000 better ideas. Our corporation had to have an insurance company that pays medical claims promptly, fairly, and courteously. Connecticut General really came through for us. Coming through for you, that's what CG people do. Dental claim forms are a lot easier to fill out when they're in my language instead of insurance ease. And that's how Connecticut General comes through for me. Coming through for you, that's what CG people do. Call us, we'll come through for you too. Next Saturday, the CBS Sports Spectacular features highlights of the exciting L.A. Times 500 and highlights of the nine-ball pool championship. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday. Fortunately, it is not raining in the press box. Oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're dry just barely, though, as we go back to play. June Jones, wide open. Wallace Francis at the 25, up to the 35-yard line. Now that was a fine pattern by Francis coming down on a curl pattern. He caused Chapman to fall down to lose his feet. And it is getting a little slippery out there. Jones had time for a change. First down for the Falcons, their third of the afternoon. Well, Bengals doing a job in St. Louis. They lead them 21 to nothing in the second period. Another Pete Johnson rushing touchdown. His second of the afternoon. Andrews cracks through, breaks through the first wave of Tacklers carries beyond the 40 out to the 43 yard line. I'm trying to think of the uh, Falcons been beyond the 50 yet. No I don't believe so Frank. You know they got a this runner Andrews runs so doggone hard that he breaks tackles and other people get a chance to hit him. So he's probably more susceptible to fumbling. Now why would you think he'd run better in the road artificial turf. Yeah. Yeah I would think so because it is a faster track and it gives him a little better footing. Second and three. Falcons from their 42 yard line Andrews in motion Jones back to throw has it blocked on him. Elois Grooms number 78 got the paw up and battered it away intended for Francis. Well, they put Andrews in motion here to draw the safety out of there to try to take Brown out and try to come back underneath here to Francis but the ball's blocked. It's difficult to get over those guys now they're so tall and so big once they get their hands up nowhere to throw. Tampa Bay leading Minnesota in the second period. <laughs> Tommy Kramer has hit Terry LeCount in a 26 yard touchdown pass on the Vikings in that one. Well the Saints are lined up in the pass rush now all four people on that line of scrimmage. One running back that's Andrews third down three. Here come the Saints sideline throw to Mitchell the tight end who has the first down and moves it into Saints territory at the 44 yard line. You know Frank that's been quite a mystery here Mitchell that's only his 10th catch of the season. He has a career total now of 299 4,285 yards and 27 touchdowns and he's not being used this year. He's a secondary receiver here Jones looks left Mitchell's wide open they let him go. You wonder why they're not using him either he doesn't get open or they just don't have him as part of their pass offense design. First down Atlanta Falcons with the football at the 43 yard line of the New Orleans Saints. This is the first thing close to a drive that the Falcons have had all afternoon. Stand back in motion. Jones comes out there firing again. Hits Jenkins for the first down at the 30. Chapman makes the stop. Well the Falcons are using a lot of motion to take the linebacker out from underneath and they bring Francis back there. Fine catch in there. A little curl pattern the Falcons controlling the ball trying to get a score on the board. Well that's Jenkins not not flat Francis. First and ten ball is at the 30 yard line. Of the New Orleans Saints. 
Four minutes, five seconds left to play in the first half. Saints leading 24 to nothing. Stand back in motion. June Jones goes to the far side this time. Incomplete intended for Francis. Now the Falcons doing the right thing. Going on first down. In most cases in that flex defense, you only have two people up front in a good pass rushing position on first or second and short. And Atlanta now taking advantage of it. We might, we might see the Saints drop with four people up front knowing that Atlanta has to throw. Interesting little dialogue out there between Eric Felt and the Saint defensive back in Francis after that uh, misfire. <laughs> He'd probably tell him, don't come in my area anymore. Well, Felton gave him a pretty good shot. Francis didn't particularly care for it. Here's Andrews. Short yardage to the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Boy, look at this. Brian Seip has hit Ozzie Newsom with another touchdown pass. And with two minutes left to play in the first half, Cleveland leads Pittsburgh 20 to six. They're hard to figure out in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you know, they, they are going so strong, look unbeatable, then they get blown out by San Diego, and now Cleveland's beating them there. Third and eight for the Falcons. Trying to get something going offensively. But they found out if they could hang on to the football, they can do all right. They moved it downfield. Now they got to go against that three-man rush with eight people back. Jones rolling out, looking, still looking. Mitchell short of the first down at the 24-yard line. They had to reach the 20 for the first. So it'll be fourth and four. What do you do now? Field goal? Go for uh, it. Go for the touchdown. Get, or go for the first down. You need a score here. Field goal might be a little difficult. Raining, heavy weather. Be tough from this from this far out. Falcons field goal kicker Tim Mazzetti hasn't set the world on fire this year either. No, he hasn't. He's not had a good year. Here's a guy who won six games for him in the last seconds last year. Fourth and four. Falcons at the St. 24 yard line, trailing 24 to nothing. Jones, good protection. Stand back at the 10, at the 5, touchdown. Great call, great throw. Up. We got a flag. We got a penalty marker thrown down near the area of the 5 yard line. Oh, it's against the Falcons. Good break for the Saints, but not for the Falcons. It looks like preliminary indication is a defensive, or rather an offensive holding call against Alfred Jenkins, I do believe, which will move it back to the 17-yard line, but it's still enough for the first down. Still got the first, first down. Foul, clipping, number 84 on the run, first down. So the hold or the clip happened just as Stanback was about to go into the end zone at about the five yard line. So they get the first down to keep the drive going. They use the, uh, lose the 10 yards from the spot of the foul, which makes the line of scrimmage the 17 yard line. First and 10. Stanback up the middle. Hanging out of the ball with both hands as he carries to the 13. Pick up a four, it'll be second down six. Price makes the stop. Now we're almost to the two minute warning. There's the whistle indicating the two minute warning which will go to both benches now. Rain continues to pelt down here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium with the Saints leading the Falcons 24 to nothing. Sorry, I said we are not interested in that proposal. <sighs> The meeting is next Thursday, Bill. 60 long tons on September. Fredericks, are you listening to me? Uh, if there's one thing you should remember about this deal... Not knowing how to listen has cost American business billions of dollars. Well, as one of the world's major corporations, we at Sperry are doing something about it. We've set up extensive listening programs that Sperry employees worldwide can take part in. And when you do business with Sperry Univac or any of our other divisions, you're going to discover that Sperry listens like no one you've ever done business with. 80,000! 
I said a thousand. No, no. Sperry, we understand how important it is to listen. Frank Lieber with Roman Gabriel. Two minutes left to play in the first half. It's been all New Orleans so far. And this is the first long drive that the Falcons have been able to mount. Of course, they've been their own worst enemies. Given up three fumbles to the Saints, including one very conveniently on the two-yard line, which the Saints turned into a touchdown. Now Second they, down, five. They got Price back in there. The Saints do. Let's look out for that pressure. Falcons are at the 13-yard line of the New Orleans Saints. One running back, Andrews. Jones waiting, looking, rolling, in trouble. Gets the pass away, almost intercepted. Intended for Francis down to the five-yard line. Fettersfield over there on coverage. Well, this time he had uh, Jenkins coming from the right side, but he was looking left. Jenkins was on a post. If he could have saw, could have seen him, they might have had a score. This time he just gets rid of the football. Good pressure by Grooms. The lowest Grooms, the Saints left defensive end. What you need is a quarterback, Gabe. His eyes in the back of your head, right? That's right. You see all those open receivers. That's what's so nice about being up here. You can see everybody, whereas on the field you can only see the primary for a while. Then you come back and you don't have the time for the secondary. Third and five for the Falcons at the 13. Jones with good protection. Complete the stand back at the three. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, Jones took a lot of pressure, had a lot of pressure on him there, but he stood in there and completed that big first down to stand back. This is the same pattern that stand back caught earlier for the first down. He comes downfield eight yards and comes to the outside. That time he ran such a good pattern that uh, Felton, number 20, makes the tackle there, but I'm not sure who the linebacker was for the Saints who lost his feet who was, uh, was going to cover the pattern. Well, you got to give stand back a lot of credit. He's been rusting on the bench. Doesn't look that rusty, really, waiting his turn while all the youngsters had their day, and now many of them down with injuries. He's getting his opportunity this afternoon, and guy who's led this club in rushing for several years past. He's been their big play guy so far in his first half. And on this drive, the only thing that Lana has showed thus far, it'll be first and goal. The officials have it spotted at the three-yard line with a minute 36 left to play in the first half. Cincinnati now 21 to 7 as Jim Hart has thrown his first touchdown pass of the day to Pat Kelly for 37 yards. Well, the Falcons coming in with their jumbo offense on the goal line. They bring McKinley in and also the second tight end, McKiska. Atlanta obviously needs to get on the scoreboard. I think if they do get on prior to the half, that'd give them a bit of a boost. Realize this thing is not completely gone. That's better to go in at halftime 24 7 than 24 zip. They're still fighting out there. Falcons' rushing game has been outstanding this year. They look for improvement this year. They really got it. Average 3.1 last year. They're up to 4.5 this year. First and goal to go. Andrews dives into the end zone. Touchdown. Well, here's the advantage of having an old pro at center. There's Jeff Van No to find block. 11 years in the league. And also the left guard, Dave Scott. Andrews goes up over the top. 80-yard drive and amazing considering the problem the Falcons have been having hanging on to the football. They were virtually flawless on that drive. Mixing in the pass with the run. Mazzetti to do the extra point honors. James to hold. No good. The extra point try missed off to the right. And Mazzetti continues to have his problems. That's the fifth one he's missed this year. That's a lot of extra points to be missing. Once again, a reminder tonight on CBS, it all starts off with 60 minutes, a brand new edition, and the laughs on the house at Archie Bunker's place, followed by one day at a time. And then, as we mentioned earlier, George Burns and John Denver in that delightful movie, Oh God, all on CBS tonight. Barry Bradshaw is in Franco Harris with a two-yard touchdown pass. 
And the Pittsburgh Steelers have narrowed the margin. They trail Cleveland 20 to 13 with 18 seconds left to play in the first half of their game. We'll have all the scores for you at halftime as well as some interesting features. Chandler is deep. But the Saints obviously are looking for an onside kick here with a minute 33 left to play in the half. They've got 10 men, I mean, nine men within five yards of the 50 yard line. He's kicking it away. Marty back there with Chandler. It's Marty at the 1, 10, 15, 20. And Marty has run out of bounds at the 24 yard line. So the Saints will get it back with a minute 28 to go. That Marty's a jack of all trades. He's got 17 tackles on the special teams, and he also returns punch and plays receiver. First and ten for the Saints with the rain coming down. You think they'd be content to tuck it and go in at halftime, 24-7? I think they'll continue the handoff to Galbraith and Muncie to see what they can do because they've been very effective with it. Chandler to the left side. Ike Harris flanked to the right. Muncie it is. Trying to get outside, does turn the corner, but has run out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Archie Manning has now completed 4 out of 10 for 92 yards. Muncie's carried 12 times for 58. As the rain continues to pelt down. Starting to puddle up a little bit there on the sideline. Muncie runs well over the top of his feet. He didn't have a problem at all going around the end where the other backs seemed to lose their footing. Second down four. Saints at their 29. Galbraith. Lost it. Big scramble for the ball at the 25-yard line. The Saints get it back. That's the one thing I would have to... One reason I think I'd run out the clock here is because one thing you don't want to do you is, don't want to fumble is lose it and give them another one going in and then you already got problems. Well you know it's surprising that they're trying to go outside too especially with such little time left in the half you think that if they were going to run they they'd challenge him up the middle. But again going outside they do run some time off that clock. Buffalo and New England are tied at three all Nick Mickemeyer has just nailed a field goal. For the Bills from 30 yards out, matching one by John Smith of 47 yards earlier. Third down and eight. Minnesota, Tampa Bay. Vikings have jumped out in front at halftime of that contest. Keep in mind, Tampa Bay wins it. They can clinch a playoff berth. They'll be the first team in the NFL to clinch a spot in the playoffs. Timeout being called here. One minute, seven seconds left to play in the first half. You know, Frank, sometimes people might wonder what you mean by a back running over the top of his feet. Muncie is the kind of back that runs straight up and down, so in doing so, playing on this kind of field, his weight is over the top of his feet, whereas a lot of runners lean forward. They might be better runners straight ahead, but they also are more apt to lose their foot footing on wet surface. Third down eight. Falcons have two timeouts left. The Saints have all of their timeouts left. They'll stay on the ground. Muncie... Tangled up at the line of scrimmage. Gets nothing. And again, the Falcons will call time. They want another shot at the football. Edgar Fields, number 77, and Ray Easterling, number 32, in the stop. One minute left to play in the first half. Saints will have to punt. And the Falcons will get one more shot at throwing a couple of passes, perhaps. And getting the ball in the end zone. Billy Rickman loosening up. Well, this would be a great, great timing for the Falcons to get a good return, put them in position for a field goal and perhaps a touchdown. Partridge getting ready to punt it. Eagles have scored first on Green Bay. That game uh, just barely underway. Partridge standing back on his 10. Now the Falcons have 10 men on the line of scrimmage. They may be coming. Oh, they are. He got it away, end over end. Rickman on the run at the 40 and run out of bounds at his own 42 by Rich Morty. Number 84. 
Saints do an outstanding job. Falcons coming with everybody, but no one really gets close to the punter. Now the scoreboard now shows Atlanta with no timeouts left. Sometimes it's easy to second guess, but they might have been better off trying to set up the fence, see if they could pick up more yardage. Now they got a ways to go to get in position for, for a field goal. And not any timeouts to work with. 24 to 6. Saints leading. 53 seconds left to play in the half. June Jones. Good protection by the Falcons. Ken Bordelon, number 50, almost picked it off, intended for Jenkins at the 35 yard line. Now they're trying to hit downfield the Jenkins on a deep out pattern to stop the clock and gain yardage, but Bordelon was in a good position, almost came up with the interception. One thing this kind of weather does. Our footing does, Frank. It does slow that pass rush down. You'll no you notice that the Saints with the three-man line, they're not getting too much pressure on Jones. Second and 10 from the 42-yard line. 47 seconds left in the half. Pressure on Jones. Gets it away and completes it for short yardage, however. To Francis at the 46-yard line. Atlanta with the hurry-up huddle. They're asking for a timeout, but I don't believe they have one. So up to the line of scrimmage come the Falcons with 25 seconds. Short throw, incomplete. Intended for Andrews, who tried to scoop it up at the 48-yard line of New Orleans. New Orleans doing a good job of taking away the sideline, forcing Atlanta to throw inside with no timeouts, run the clock out. So it'll be fourth down now. The Falcons still need five for the first down with the ball at their 47-yard line. Well, if New Orleans stops them, they still have time for possibly one or two plays. They come up with an incompletion here. They've got timeouts left. Jones gets the pass away. It is incomplete. So now possibly you could question the strategy of not punting because one pass would put the Saints at the field goal range. That's very true, but, well, the Falcons, knowing they're four and eight, they're going all out. It's hard to fault them. Cincinnati has scored again on St. Louis, 28 to seven, Bengals. Still in the first half of play. Probably got time for three plays, depending on what kind of route the Saints go to. Saints have the timeouts to use. Here's Manning. Gonna run it. Down to the 30. Out of bounds at the 25. Three seconds to go. Here comes your premium. Well, there's the, there is the advantage of having the mobile quarterback. Archie Manning been doing this for a long time, not quite as much as he used to, but here he takes advantage of it. Nobody open. Sets him up for the field goal, knowing where he is on the field, gets out of bounds with three seconds. This will be kicked from what's perhaps the muddiest part of the field. The officials have marked the ball at the 27. They'll put it down at the 34. That'll make it a 44-yard field goal attempt by your premium. With three seconds left to play in the half. Burns to hold. It's long enough. It is good. Garo, your premium. Bangs one home from 44 yards out as the half comes to an end. And the Saints leading the Falcons by a score of 27 to 6. They came to Atlanta today, bent on revenge. And thus far, they're doing just that. They've taken advantage of numerous turnovers by the Atlanta Falcons. And in that case, a gamble that backfired on Lehman Bennett when he decided not to punt but to go for it on fourth down with 13 seconds left to play from his own 45. The pass was incomplete. And then a Archie Manning scramble and a 44-yard field goal resulted in three more points for the New Orleans Saints. 
Well, you might say that the Saints come marching in and they go marching home if they continue to play the way they are. It's going to be difficult for Atlanta to make up this many points in this weather. Very wet afternoon. Take a look at the little man, the tie maker from Miami, as he bangs home this 44 yarder and his reaction. Up. Oh, yep, looks <laughs> all right so far. Well, that's the advantage of experience. You noticed how he just stayed there, little two fist up in the air. What an asset he's for the Saints. We'll be back in Atlanta in a minute. Spread your wings. Introducing the new 1980 Thunderbird, a Thunderbird of new contemporary size that shows its elegant heritage wherever you look. And with its new size and a new 4.2 liter engine, this Thunderbird has excellent estimated gas mileage and also offers the first automatic overdrive option built in America, a new engineering breakthrough. The new size Thunderbird, a better idea for the 80s. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Tonight we're brought together here by two dudes we all love. Good food. Yeah. And right here from Miller. Yeah. I want to tell you, I want to take hey, this Ronnie, opportunity myself. Give me the carrots. To tell you, I tell you, I don't get no respect. Garçon, je veux des fignons. Si, elle est pas fignons. What is it? Meatloaf sandwich and a light. Hey. We all know and appreciate. Light has one third less calories than a regular beer, and it's less filling. But the best thing is, it tastes great. Less filling. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Hey, Deacon, pass the roll. Hey, Charlie, that's my beer. No, yours is by your brother. This is my brother. That's my beer. What's wrong with you guys? Hey, Bubba, you want the peas? Ooh. Hey, you gonna eat all that? Just showing off. Gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to think I speak for all of us, but I say, if it wasn't for light, I wouldn't be where I am today. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Next Saturday, the CBS Sports Spectacular features highlights of the exciting L.A. Times 500. Plus, the battle of the NFL cheerleaders with 16 teams representing the NFC and AFC competing in the final event, the Jet Ski Contest. And highlights of the Professional Pool Players Association Nine Ball Championship. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger. Would you believe that the Cleveland Browns may win for the first time ever in Pittsburgh's Three River Stadium? About ready to start the third quarter and the Browns are still ahead. Let's get you to all the scores now. At the half, Minnesota leading Tampa Bay 14-9. The score there, of course. And the Buccaneers just need one win to ensure themselves of a spot in the playoffs. New Orleans driving for the lead in the NFC West. They put some pressure on the Rams. Strawn from two yards out. Muncie from 14 yards out. Your premium has kicked a 44-yarder and a 23-yarder, and the Saints are rolling in the slop in Atlanta. Cincinnati, meanwhile, way ahead of St. Louis. Ken Anderson to Isaac Curtis twice. 43 yards and 17 yards on that combination. And in a tough defensive battle in the Meadowlands, the Giants are ahead of the Redskins by a score of 7-3. to three. The Redskins and the Eagles tied today. Meanwhile, Buffalo and New England are tied at the half. Not a very exciting game for those two teams. Smith has kicked a 47-yard field goal for the Patriots in that one. And here it is, 2013, Cleveland leading Pittsburgh. And yes, the Steelers have turned it over again. That's 39, and that's tops for the league this year. Although Bradshaw, just before the half, hit Harris from two yards out for a touchdown, so the Steelers may be regrouping. Meanwhile, Philadelphia's head of Green Bay. It was Jaworski to Carmichael for the Eagle touchdown, and the Packers have responded with a field goal. How about some highlights? Let's check in on... Tampa Bay and Minnesota, Doug Williams was loosening his arm up and sent his talented tight end, very deep. This is one of the better tight ends in the NFL. One of the reasons why is that Giles can work deep, blocks well off the line, and here's the big fella getting down to the two-yard line. Ricky Bell has come on. Remember John McCasey's, I want him ahead of Dorsett. And who knows, maybe in the long run, it'll work out for him. It was young Tommy Kramer, though, who responded for the Vikes in the second quarter. Here he is scrambling. He learned this lesson well from Francis, didn't he? And he went to Gary LeCount for the touchdown. Later, he went to his very talented outside man on the other side, Ahmad Rashad, and Ahmad does the rest. Slips the tackle, goes down the sideline, and it is 14-9. They're about ready to start the third quarter down there in that game, Irv. 
Well, you all know at halftime, 27-6, New Orleans over Atlanta. It's been a slow drizzle all game long. Archie Manning in the first half threw the ball 10 times, completed four passes, but one of the biggest plays in the first quarter came right here. When Manning goes to number 89, Wes Chandler in the first quarter makes a great catch, setting up a scoring opportunity for his offensive club, and they take advantage of that as Mike Strawn goes in from the three-yard line, and in the first quarter, the score is New Orleans 7, Atlanta nothing. Chuck Munchie's having a pretty good year. Number 42 is running the ball exceptionally well this season. Going off his right end, turns upfield, a 15-yard scamper. Touchdown, New Orleans 14, Atlanta nothing. Following a fumble recovery, Tony Galbraith goes in from the two-yard line for the Saints. 21 nothing right away. It looked like it might be a route. But Bill Andrews comes back late in the second quarter himself, dives over. Touchdown, 24-6. Tim Mazzetti missed a field goal. Darrell Rapim, you know, came in later, kicked a field goal for the Saints. The score now is 21-6 and a half. Irv, as you well know, Tom Banks is one of the better centers in the National Football League. You seldom see Banks do what you're about to see him do right now on this snap. Up over Little's head, tracked it down, slippery going. He couldn't get any footing to still get that punt off. Bengals were all over him, and down he went. Pete Johnson's having a fine year for the Bengals. Barged in for their first touchdown. And then it was the combination. These guys couldn't do anything earlier. Curtis was hurt, so was Anderson. Look at him now. 43 yards to Isaac, who can still turn it loose. Anderson pitching to Archie, who makes a magnificent cut on this slippery going, then got back down to the outside and got to the Cardinals' 13-yard line. There's been a lot of entertaining offense, particularly on the Bengals' side. Johnson for his second score. Jim Hart given that good time. When this Cardinal offensive line puts its mind to it, they can still protect that quarterback. Pat Tilly, touchdown for the Cards. Oh, watch here. Carroll, trying to cut and get upfield on that punt, is going to turn it over to the Bengals. And it was Anderson to Curtis. This one from 19 yards out, the second time that they have hooked up for a touchdown. We've got a tough defensive battle going on in the Meadowlands. The Giants and the Redskins. Phil Simms, of course, the Giant rookie quarterback, was able to lead the Giants to the first touchdown. This pass set it up. It was Gray working the sideline. Sims hit him right now, and Gray made a fine catch, and Coder slammed on in for the touchdown in that game. Irv, you got anything yet on the Philadelphia Eagles? Do we have any highlight on that? Sure, we got a couple of plays. I want to, Tim Mazzetti missed an extra point, not a field goal, 27-6 game in Atlanta. Of course, the Philadelphia Eagles, when they get in trouble, go to the big guy right away. And I'm talking about Harold Carmichael. Ron Jaworski, number 17, looks for, <laughs> number seven, looks for number 17, who makes a good catch. Down to the 10-yard line. The Eagles, by the way, lead this game in the second quarter by a score of 7-3. Jaworski cashes in in a hurry on that long pass completion opportunity. Goes to Wilbert Montgomery. Touchdown in the second quarter. The Eagles lead the Green Bay Packers 7-3, and they've never won in Wisconsin before. All right. The NFL Today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Sunday. Oh, it's me. God. Not what you expected, huh? George Burns stars with John Denver in... It's a miracle. I don't do miracles. Oh, God. This is CBS. The third annual Mirage Bowl took place yesterday in Tokyo, Japan, and Notre Dame finally got into its bowl game against Miami. 80,000 people watching the game, and Brent has the highlights. You know, for Vegas Ferguson, it was not a day off, Jane. He carried the ball 35 times for the Irish, including this one down to the Miami two-yard line. And from there, Vegas scored one of his three touchdowns. It was 7-0 Irish. Now, Miami at their own eight-yard line, and watch what happens to Jim Kelly's pass. Dave Waymer's got it for Notre Dame, and it was 14-0. And it rained throughout this game. Miami now at the Irish 11. And they finally get something going as Hobbs is out of bounds at the two. Gary Breckner then slammed across, and it was 14-7. And there was a contest before 18,000. Late in the third quarter, though, this punt by Greg LaBelle turned the game completely around. Dave Durson found an alley down the right sideline and got back to the Hurricane 16-yard line. Two plays later, it was Vegas Ferguson again on the day, 35 carries, 177 yards, and a 40-15 to 15 victory by the Irish. Shake down the thunder right in Tokyo. Now, meanwhile, while Notre Dame was in Tokyo, Too Tall Jones was busy. Not nearly as many people on hand, though, to watch this unbeaten heavyweight boxer. Too Tall 2-0 going into this battle. We pick it up in the first round 
And folks, that's all it lasted. 41 seconds, and Too Tall Jones had stuffed another one. He's now 3-0, and and desperately looking for somebody to fight back. And while Too Tall was in Washington, Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics, the hottest team of the NBA right now, were down in Atlanta, where the Hawks are always tough. Bird, of course, is dueling one Magic Johnson for Rookie of the Year in the NBA. Watch Dan Roundfield block Dave Cowan's shot in this sequence, and John Drew will get back for the Hawk hoop. Drew had 24. Cowan, though, retaliated with 28 for the Celtics. And with Larry Bird tossing in two more from the corner, the Celtics win again, 106 to 101. Now let's send you back to the stadium and the game you're watching. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealers who bring you the better idea cars and trucks for the 80s. The Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Owens Corning Fiberglass Corporation, makers of fine fiberglass products for consumers and industry. In many of the world's emerging nations, telecommunications isn't as much of a problem as it used to be. Thanks to, for one thing, microwave relay systems, which greatly facilitated telephone calls within the country. And even more important, something called Earth Stations, which made it possible to call out of the country via satellite. G. No, GTE. Take care of your car at Kmart. Our automotive service centers care. Shop for Christmas at your Kmart Automotive Center. Save up to $39 on an auto sound system. For just $96, you get an AM-FM stereo radio with 8-track or cassette, plus a pair of great-sounding 5-inch or 6x9 coaxial speakers, all for $96 at Kmart Automotive Centers across the U.S., where quality car products are Kmart priced. This is Selena Nesbitt, age 6. A few years ago, doctors said that she probably would never be able to walk again because of cerebral palsy. Well, Selena, you showed them. I'm George Martin of the Giants. Selena goes to the Cerebral Palsy Center here in Union County. It's one of hundreds of services supported by the United Ways of the Tri-State area. Here they believe that handicapped people have the same needs as all of us. They need to be listened to, they need to be challenged, and they need lots of love. You know, I'm blessed. My three children are perfectly healthy. But I've seen United Way work to help my uncle when he was blind and other members of my family when illness struck a few years ago. They've helped my family. Maybe they've helped yours. United Way works here, and it works in your town, too. Thanks to you, it works for all of us. The United Way. How are we doing? The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. We're in Atlanta this afternoon. Frank Lieber, along with Roman Gabriel at halftime, the New Orleans Saints lead the Atlanta Falcons by a score of 27 to 6, but certainly the Falcons showed some signs of life there in the late in the like, uh, second period. I think so, Frank. With two minutes to go, they drove one in. They get six on the board, but then they missed the extra point. Went that went for a fourth down situation, and it allowed New Orleans to get another field goal, so it's going to be tough going. Well, it's a situation that uh, Saints should have well in hand at this point. You would think so, because the, the weather is, is not too good. The footing now is getting slippery. Going to be difficult for Atlanta to come back. We're ready now for the start of the second half, or will be right after we take a look at the halftime statistics for you. And as you can see, the statistics, despite the fact New Orleans had an early edge, uh, kind of evened up because of that long Atlanta drive near the end of the first half of play. The turnover is the big one. As you saw, Atlanta has given it up five times. Well, Atlanta's had five turnovers, four fumbles, an interception, and also five quarterback sacks. Rich Marty fielding the second half kickoff and carrying it back to the 35-yard line. Saints first and 10 from that point. Continued to rain hard during halftime. The fans here, the ones who stayed, treated to a great halftime show by the Jackson State Band. 
which uh, got to give those kids a lot of credit. They did it under other adverse weather conditions. And did a fine job at that. The bold and the brave staying in this ball game, this ballpark. It's raining. Manning in the first half, four out of ten for 92 yards. Muncie, leading rusher in the game with 59 yards and 13 carries. Galbraith had 20 yards in six carries in the first half of play. Muncie gets the call, breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Almost got outside. Picked up three in the play. Roland Lawrence finally made the stop. Boy, if he don't bring him down, he might have turned that corner and went a long ways. Roland Lawrence was the last guy there. Every step Muncie takes, he adds to the single season Saints rushing record <laughs> at 72 against Seattle to bring his season total to 879. And of course, seems to be on his way to a thousand yard year. Fish was marked at the 37, so give Muncie only two on the play. Make it second and eight. Archie Manning, who's put it up sparingly because of the wet weather, gets it away to Galbraith. He breaks a tackle, drives for the first down, and will be close at the 45-yard line. Ray Easterling and Roland Lawrence over there on coverage for the Atlanta Falcons. Well, that was a smart play on Manning's part. Looking, looking downfield for Chandler, covered well, goes out to the secondary receiver, almost gets the first down, but does put his team in position for a first down. Saints lead the NFL in average yards gained per pass play, 7.2. It's an outstanding statistic. Third down, less than a yard needed for the first. Johnny Davis with a 16-yard run for Tampa Bay. That Minnesota-Tampa Bay game with one point separating those two clubs. Galbraith picks up the first and drives out to the 48-yard line. Now you're the Saints now, and you got this big lead at the start of the second half. I imagine Dick Nolan said, let's just hang out of the ball, control it, take your time, run the time off the clock, wouldn't you say? That's right, and I think they'll still put the ball up, but they'll put it up with precision. Rather than going downfield, they'll probably try to hit the backs, the tight end, and control the ball, rather than trying to take chances because they don't have to. There's Nolan right there. He's Dick pretty Nolan. happy. Nine and ten in his coaching career against the Atlanta Falcons. Part of that, of course, when he was with San Francisco, he's four and five in Atlanta. First and ten. Saints at their 48. Nice fake by Manning. Now he's got problems. Gets it away to Galbraith. Won't be much there unless Galbraith can make something out of it out of his own. Winds up being stopped behind the line of scrimmage back at the 45-yard line. Tony Dakin, number 55 who has come in at the start of the second half, made the grab. Well, there's another good example of why Manning has only been sacked 12 times, even though his offensive line gives him time. Whenever he does get pressure, he drops the ball off to his secondary receivers well. Look at that rain, Frank. Really coming down, just straight down. Second down, 11. Yard lines virtually being obliterated. <laughs> Second and 12, Manning throwing that wet ball. Completes the pass for short yardage over on the far sideline. Not much there at all. Good coverage by the defense of the Atlanta Falcons. We had a flag down. The pass completed to Muncie. And we got a face mask being called against uh, Pennywell, I believe. He almost made Muncie three inches shorter. Tried to rip his head off. Maybe Dewey McLean, number 52. Let's see. Five yard face mask penalty. Number 52 defense, first down. Well, the key to this second half of play for the Falcons, they have to stop New Orleans without a score on this first drive. Saints right now are in the muddiest part of the field. The ball is at the 47 yard line of the Atlanta Falcons. Galbraith. To the 45, maybe the 44, Wilson Famuina. Number 74 makes the stop for Atlanta. It's nothing but pure mud there. Not much grass left in that particular area of the field. When you look at those first half stats, Chandler for the Saints came in with 53 catches. And I'm sure the Falcons wanted to try to put the clamp on him, but he's the only one that's caught any passes in the first half. He had four 
out of 10 that Manning completed. Second and eight. From the 44-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons, Archie Manning. Pass is ruled incomplete at the 35. Intended for Harris over there. Yeah, it looks miserable down there. You've been in the middle of a lot of these mud games. Is it as miserable as it looks from up here? Does it get to be fun like little kids playing in the mud? I'll tell you what. Back in 1965, we played in a game like this uh, against Cleveland in the Coliseum, and you, you don't expect rain, but it does get to be fun because there are a lot of things you can do. And at that time, we were like the Falcons. We'd lost a lot of games, but we beat Cleveland because we had a lot of fun out there. We had a lot of characters that played with character. <laughs> Ball is at the 44-yard line of Atlanta. It is third down and eight. Flag goes down. Falcons may have been offside with their blitz as Manning gets rid of the pass. Well, they called Manning out of bounds before he dropped that one off. Back at his own end of the field at the 46 is where he ran out of bounds. But we've got an Atlanta offside. Don Smith, the right end. Broke through there a bit quickly as the Falcons lined up with the Blitz and they came after Archie Manning. They had him on the run. He ran out on the wrong, right side anyway, his own bench. Sixty-five defense, offside, still third down. Don Smith, the number one draft choice. Rookie right end defensively for the New Orleans Saints or rather for the Atlanta Falcons as you look at the Falcons defensive huddle now they got Pennywell back in the game they're going to play for the run now third and three ball is at the 40 yard line as close as we can tell of the Atlanta Falcons on third and four they lay it out there for Chandler and he goes down with Rick Bias and a great big puddle at about the 20. Well, there's an example of the rain. If he has that ball out in front of Chandler, Chandler had a couple of steps on Bias, but the ball sailed on Manning. Ball's awful wet out there. Punting situation for Partridge of the New Orleans Saints. Kicked it three times in the first half for an average of 34.7. Billy Rickman standing on the 10-yard line, anticipating the kick for Atlanta. He fumbles it, passes it, complete down to the 10. <laughs> this could go for six points. <laughs> Touchdown. Williams, the tight end. Oh, there's a flag on the 30-yard line. Brooks Williams, second-year tight end from North Carolina, but they'll bring it back. A heads up play by Partridge. Great play. <laughs> you would think they would tell their punter not to do that because they were burnt in New Orleans against Atlanta before on that same kind of play. Ball really slippery, pops out. Partridge gets away and lays one out there. He's gone to the races. Brooks Williams. Would have been quite a thrill for him, but does not hold up. Here's the walk-off and the call by the Referee Gene Barr. Number 76, downfield, ineligible, still fourth down. So they'll get a chance to punt it again as the penalty goes against Jim Fritzrack. Well, there it is. He just didn't look the ball in. On a day like today, punters, receivers, backs, everyone's got to look it in. Took the eye off of it, but still came up with a big play. A good passer. Partridge standing back in his 35-yard line is Rickman. With the towel is down around the 15. And Atlanta's end of the field. Second half is about five minutes old. Ten minutes and 36 seconds left to play in the period. Good snap and good kick by Partridge, <laughs> considering. Rickman going to the far side, fields it at the 15, and run out of bounds near the 20-yard line. And Rickman's quite a quite a receiver himself. He had to go a long ways to field that ball, and by fielding that ball, he gave him better field position. Because if you don't get to it, the ball rolls through the end zone, near the end zone. 
Oh, Grandpa, he's so cute. Yeah, he's more than just a soft, cuddly dog. See, he's got a radio in his tummy. Radio. Saturday, the CBS Sports Spectacular features highlights of the exciting LA Times 500, plus the final event and the battle of the NFL cheerleaders. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. First and ten for the Falcons, their first offensive possession of the second half of play. June Jones, who in the first half, 10 out of 20 for 96 yards, lets it fly and completes it. Near sideline throw to Wallace Francis. At the 30-yard line, Clarence Chapman shoves him out of bounds. Well, that's Francis, a, that's his third catch of the afternoon. He has set a new club record for catches in a single season. That's a good call by Atlanta. New Orleans still sitting in that run defense on first down. There's a giant seven, Washington six. Another field goal by the Redskins, Mark Mosley. Second down and a yard needed for the first down. Falcons are at their own 30-yard line. Rain has subsided somewhat. Jones giving to Andrews as the first at the 35-yard line. Well, you can see Andrews wrapping the ball up with two hands now. He knows they're going to be pulling and tugging at it. Ball's awful wet. Pat Hughes, number 54 in the stop. There's Andrews' figures for the game so far. Standback is four carries for 22 yards. Lehman Bennett. Well, I bet if you could wish him for a touchdown, Lehman would have that done right now. First and ten. Falcons at their 34-yard line. Jones with good protection gets it away in heavy traffic intended for Jackson. At midfield. Now there's a point we discussed earlier. Whenever that ball gets wet and it's raining, it's difficult for the receiver to catch it in his hands. So he's got to cradle it down below in his stomach. Ball was a little high. On a normal day, that would have been a good pass. Second and ten for the Falcons at their 35-yard line. The Saints are an impressive team. They've really come out here and put it to the Falcons. Jackson to the left side. Francis to the right. Jenkins in the slot off to the left as the Falcons are going with a three wide receiver offense here as they play catch up. Sandback and Andrews the setback. June Jones intended for Jenkins. Couldn't hold it. David Gray, number 21 of the Saints secondary out of the way. Well, there's Jenkins coming in on the corner pattern, but watch out. He has to slow down right there because of the field. And it allows the defensive corner to come up and make the play on him. So it is third and ten for the Falcons at their 35. Either it's brightening up here or the lights are beginning to make more of an effect. I can't tell. I think it's the lights. Yeah. <laughs> Big play down for, the, for, for Atlanta. Jones steps up into the pocket, passes tipped and completed anyway. Francis makes the grab. He might be short. Going to be close for the first down. Near midfield. And we got a little 10-yard curl pattern. Jones lets it go. It's deflected there. Francis makes a fine effort here. He he either gets the first down or almost picks it up. Francis was shaken up on the play and is being helped off the field as they bring in the chains to measure. Ball is at the 45-yard line of the Falcons. So they need just a little bit. Well, they got to go for it. Really don't have that much choice here, trailing 27-6. Even though we're midway in the third period. Well, Cleveland 27, Pittsburgh 13. Ryan Snipe to Calvin Hill on a three-yard touchdown pass. Cincinnati has scored again on St. Louis 28-13. 51-yard run by Pat Kelly. Well, let's watch Andrews up the middle. 
Fourth and one. Falcons at the 45, and June Jones calls timeout. Now I thought maybe it was a problem with the 30-second clock about to run out, but it had 14 seconds on it when Jones elected to call timeout. He comes over to the sidelines to talk things over with Coach Lehman Bennett. We'll be back right after this. I'd like to talk to you about the Sony Betamax and an incredible feature called Beta Scan. I'm Tom Williams, Sr., and if you know tennis, you know my son. Here's a cassette of his last championship match. Beta Scan lets me go fast forward in reverse so I can skip the boring stuff like this long rally and stop when I come to the real exciting parts like Tom Jr. here dashing onto the court to pick up the ball. Isn't Betamax terrific? It lets you see what you've been missing and miss what you don't want to see. It's from Sony, the one and only. Let me tell you about one quiet car, the 1980 Ford LTD. In test, an LTD rode quiet as a Rolls Royce. And this LTD has a dandy new engineering feature. One that can give you extra miles per gallon. Ford calls it automatic overdrive. I call it incredible. No other American car maker has it. With automatic overdrive option, no full-size car beats LTD's eight-cylinder estimated MPG. Ford LTD, quiet as a Rolls Royce. Give a listen at your Ford dealer. <laughs> 